Did you know that Noah was a liberal, eco-warrior, and the world's first environmentalist? Did you know that Noah was really an uncaring, dark, axe-wielding murderer? Did you know that Noah threatened to kill his eldest son's wife and her unborn daughter because he didn't want the earth to be repopulated? Did you know that Noah's really old pal, Methuselah, was a witch doctor who helped guide Noah spiritually? Did you know that Noah enlisted the help of Satan's fallen angels to protect him while building the ark? What? You didn't know all these things? Were you not listening in Sunday school as a child? Did you skip the book of Genesis when reading your Bible? Of course you didn't know all this, because it's all untrue. Many, if they watched the movie after viewing Paramount's misleading trailer and their bogus claim on their Noah movie website that, quote, is true to the essence, values, and integrity of the story that is a cornerstone of faith for millions of people worldwide. Well, if you still go see the movie, you're going to be in for a really rude awakening. The colossal movie maker Paramount ended up in a huge conundrum after press reviews of the initial previews of the Noah film revealed that it was not true to the biblical narrative. Indeed, Noah director Darren Aronofsky seems to promote Antichrist, Gnostic elements in his other movies and approaches the Noah story as a great fable. Aronofsky admitted, quote, I don't think it's a very religious story. I think it's a great fable. That's part of many different religions and spiritual practices, end quote. Making things even worse for Paramount was the FTC's revelation that the result of a 5,000 person survey found that 98% of Christian consumers would have no interest in seeing a movie about Noah if it was not biblically based. Paramount, worried about losing their whopping $160 million investment, sought to draw Christians into spending their money by claiming it was true to scripture. Because you see, subverting Christianity is hip in Hollywood, but it's not so hip if your director loses your almost $200 million investment in the process. Regarding reports like 98% of Christians would not see the Noah movie if it was not truly biblically based, Aronofsky arrogantly responded, quote, I don't give an F about the test scores. My films are outside the scores, end quote. For those Christians who may be deluded into believing that the Noah movie will be truly biblical, Aronofsky, who has a penchant for dropping F-bombs when talking about Noah, admitted of the movie, quote, anything you're expecting, you're effing wrong, end quote. And quote, Noah is the least biblical, biblical film ever made, end quote. Paramount grew even more concerned when screeners, quote, questioned the film's adherence to the Bible story and reacted negatively to the intensity and darkness of the lead character, end quote. Aronofsky has so twisted the story of Noah that righteous Noah is cast as a somewhat evil character. Aronofsky told The Guardian, quote, he's a dark, complicated character. While The New Yorker claimed that Paramount had cut a more biblically-based edition of the movie, the edition was subsequently scrapped, and Aronofsky's least biblical ever movie seems to have won the day. Aronofsky boasted, quote, My version of the film was green-lighted. And tragically, the Hollywood Reporter stated that, quote, Paramount is fully supporting his version of the Noah story. Add to this the fact that Russell Crowe, who is playing Noah in the film, denigrated Noah as a callous, uncaring person who had no love for humanity and couldn't care less if the world perished. According to Crow's words, it seems as though Noah will be depicted in the film as an evil, uncaring man. Listen to Crow in his own words. The funny thing with people that, you know, they, they consider Noah to be a, a benevolent figure, you know, because he looked after the animals. Oh, Noah, Noah and the animals. It's like, are you kidding me? This is a dude that stood by and watched the entire population of the planet perish. He's not benevolent. You know? he's, not even, he's not even nice. You know what I mean? At one point in the story, his son says, you know, I thought you were chosen because you were good. And he goes, I was chosen because I can get the job done, mate. <laughs> so I think people are going to be uh, judging from where their questions come from. I think they're going to be quite surprised what Noah actually really means, what it means to be in that position. Was Noah an evil, uncaring man? Absolutely not. When we look at the evidence, God's word makes it crystal clear that Noah was a righteous man. Genesis chapter 6 verses 8 and 9 says, quote, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time. Noah walked with God, end quote. God's word tells us that Noah was a loving man because Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 declares that faith works through love. And Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that Noah was a man of faith. And I quote, 
By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. End quote. Did Noah sit idly by, without even caring for or warning the wicked? Again, untrue. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 5 tells us that Noah was, quote, a preacher of righteousness. Preachers of God's word warn people to repent so that they can be saved and delivered from the wrath to come. However, like ravenous dogs consumed by rabies that are bent on destruction, so the unrepentant wicked who are hell bent on evil can only be condemned in the end. Genesis chapter 6 tells us that the world at that time was filled with violence, sexual perversion, and that people's thoughts were only evil continually. Which is why I'm already sick of seeing the ads for this floating piece of giraffe c Aronofsky and Crow are not the only ones using the Noah movie as an occasion to impugn the character of God. The notoriously arrogant and spiteful atheist Bill Maher has used the movie as a rallying point to blaspheme his maker. Hey God, you know you're kind of a dick when you're in a movie with Russell Crowe and you're the one with anger issues. <laughs> Mar, like Aronofsky, butchers and twists the Noah story to make a false allegation against God by claiming that God punished everybody for the wickedness of a few, when in fact the scriptures make it quite clear in Genesis chapter 6 verse 12 that, quote, all the people on earth had corrupted their ways, end quote. What kind of tyrant punishes everyone just to get back at the few he's mad at? Ironically, Bill Maher condemns the Creator for judging the evil and wickedness of his creatures, even though God alone has the divine right and the just duty to do so, while Maher himself, a little creature, wants to see countless people killed. But the thing that's really disturbing about Noah isn't the silly. It's that it's immoral. It's about a psychotic mass murderer who gets away with it, and his name is God. Mars' hypocrisy is absolutely chilling when he claims that he would like to see countless people killed to help alleviate what he believes to be the problem of overpopulation. I'm consistently pro-death. My motto is, let's kill the right people. <laughs> I'm pro-choice. I'm for assisted suicide. I'm for regular suicide. I'm for whatever gets the freeway moving. The planet is too crowded, and we need to promote death. Kill the right people. But I, I'm just not one of those people who thinks all life is precious, you know. I, I bet you a lot of people wouldn't say that, but if you're pro-choice, maybe that's really what you're thinking. Ironically, Bill Maher is promoting the same kind of evil culture of murder and death that invited God's judgment of the flood in the first place. It's also not very surprising that Maher is not setting the example and volunteering to be the first to die. Incredibly, as uncaring and as dark as Aronofsky and Crow said that Noah would be portrayed, they actually made God himself look even more evil. In fact, Noah is led to believe that God intended to eliminate every human being and not allow any humans to repopulate the earth, and Noah even attempts to murder his two baby granddaughters. God even uses the animals to help Noah pull off the dastardly deed. Hollywood screenwriter Brian Gatawa writes, quote, most of the last half of the script is a family killer thriller, like sleeping with the enemy. But in the end, he, speaking of Noah, fails. He says to himself, to the creator, I can't, I can't do it. I'm sorry, I am so sorry. He is just too compassionate to carry out God's cruel plan. Noah is more loving than God, end quote. Thus, as evil and callous as Noah is portrayed, Aronofsky portrays God as even worse. Was God uncaring and unmerciful during the days of Noah? Absolutely not. In fact, we are not only told that Noah was a preacher of righteousness to the lost, but that God's spirit strove with the incorrigible and unrepentant wicked for 120 years before the flood. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 says, quote, Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he also is flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be 120 years. End quote. We are further told in God's word, the Bible, that this striving against man's sin was owing to God's patience or the, quote, long suffering of God toward the wicked, who were continually grieving his heart by their perverse and murderous behavior. First Peter says, quote, when once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. One of the most repeated truths throughout all of Scripture is the declaration that, quote, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. 
Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 says, Say to them, As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? End quote. So according to the only reliable and ancient testimony we have of Noah, Russell Crowe's version of Noah is all wet, and Russell Crowe has to eat crow. Aronofsky's portrayal of God as evil or unmerciful in the movie Noah should not shock us. Part of the agenda in many in Hollywood is to manufacture atheists and Satanists and turn the masses against the one true God, our Creator. In our eye-popping video, Hollywood's War on God, we document the Gnostic Satanic themes of inverting God and Satan in many of Hollywood's most popular movies. The early church's greatest enemy was the Gnostics, who Satan used to rewrite the biblical narrative to portray God as Satan and Satan as God. Long before portraying both God and Noah in a dark light, Aronofsky imported Gnostic elements into his other movies. For instance, in our article, The Noah Movie Deception and the Last Days, at our goodfight.org site, we expose Gnostic and Satanic themes in Aronofsky's movies, The Fountain, Black Swan, and Pi. It is hard to overestimate the colossal role that Hollywood has played in plunging the world down a dark, immoral spiral that is corrupting the world, families, and morals. Jesus Christ warned that in the last days, the world would once again be like it was in the days of Noah, just before the flood. Jesus prophesied in Matthew chapter 24, quote, For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. Jesus warned in the same chapter, quote, Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of the most will grow cold. Genesis chapter 6 tells us that God flooded the earth because it was filled with violence, sexual perversion, and the thoughts of humans were only evil continually. Today we are certainly seeing the second coming of the days of Noah transpire before our very eyes. Dear friend, God doesn't want you to go to hell. Just as Jesus warned that the last days would be like it was in the days of Noah, God has also provided an ark for the safety of you and your family in these last days. Noah and the ark were a glorious typological or prophetic picture foreshadowing the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world, an ark that God had before time ordained to save us from the final judgment. Noah's family was saved because of God's incredible mercy and grace. Just as there was only one door into the ark, so Jesus is the one and only door and the ark of salvation that God has provided to save us from the fire of God's wrath to come. Jesus Christ himself said, quote, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Don't wait until it's too late. Just as countless people must have rushed to the ark after the door was shut and sought to get in before the floodwaters rose above their heads, so many will wait until it's too late to repent of their sins and turn to Christ. Tragically, they will be overtaken by the eternal wrath of God because they waited too long. Jesus warned that it will be just like it was in the days of Noah for those who wait too long to enter into the door of salvation. Jesus said, and I quote, but unless you repent, you will all perish. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. Dear friend, we plead with you to turn from the road to destruction and cry out in faith to Jesus Christ for a saving grace. There's no work you could do to save yourself from the coming judgment. You must repent or turn from your evil rebellion against God and embrace Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to be saved. He alone died for all your sins and He alone can save you from the wrath that we all deserve. Just as God used His creation of a beautiful rainbow as a symbol of his covenant not to flood the earth again. So the book of Revelation states that God's throne is surrounded by an emerald rainbow. God also promises that after the Lord Jesus Christ comes back to judge the world with fire, he will create a glorious new heaven and new earth for those who have been saved through faith in Jesus Christ. His word states there will no longer be any pain or sorrow or tears forever.
2 Peter chapter 3 says, right after it stated that people are willingly ignorant of the fact that God flooded the earth and that next time he'll judge the world with fire and that he's not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance and be saved, that quote, since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in our holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless." End quote. The Ark of Salvation is waiting for you. Jesus' arms are wide open and he promised, whoever comes to me, I will never cast out and everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Do it now before it's too late. Don't dare gamble with your eternal soul. The odds are too great. The stakes are too high and eternity is far too long. We want to encourage you to get the word out and flip the script on the devil by taking this opportunity and what Satan meant for evil through the Noah movie to share with others who God really is and how salvation comes through faith in Christ. We want to encourage you to share this video everywhere. We also want to invite you to become Good Fight's friend on Facebook. And go to goodfight.org and explore our theater and our various articles and resources. We want to thank you for joining us. May God richly bless you as you seek his face.